Meet Vincent Wilson. He's a 105-year-old pensioner, but according to him, he doesn't look a day over 80. An accountant until the day he retired, his ability to recall is intact, but his hearing, not so much. And so this is how we communicate. By writing questions on paper, he reads them with his big magnifying glass and responds. This is where they said that we are going to put back the money, but like it's like that. Like I'm assuming responsibility, but the right way people your money. Mr. Wilson revealed that he noticed a significant amount of money in his savings account at the National Commercial Bank, NCB, was missing last year. He doesn't use online banking, neither does he use a debit card. Instead, his transactions are done over the counter with his physical bank book. During one of his monthly visits, he discovered that over $6 million was missing from his account. The withdrawals occurred over a two-month period. In a single transaction alone, $5 million gone. His balance, $83,674.07. I don't feel good at all. This one is in much I don't eat, I lose my appetite. All that was from... Morning, yeah, yeah. It's just a, a backline show. You know? I don't have the appetite to, I don't want them to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it makes me up. And the book itself yeah, is where I'm supposed to be buried from. TVJ News sought a comment from the bank about the matter. However, its policy doesn't allow for it to give out personal customers' data. Head of NCB's Fraud Prevention Unit, Dane Nicholson, said he would look into it. But for social development specialist Dr. Peter and Baker, it's financial abuse. Elder abuse, especially stealing the money that they worked hard for or making it hard for them to get access to it, is one of the worst things we could do to this, the self-respect, the dignity of an older person. You fought so many battles that you're kind of, you know, why am I going to go and fight this one again? And so, we asked Mr. Wilson, what has kept him going? The father upstairs. Because every Sunday, believe me, I have to get prayer in church. Sometimes it looks strange, people, but I go. I want some personal prayer. Vincent Wilson has since received a portion of his money back. Coupled with it is a signed document from the bank indemnifying it of any future legal actions. She prop 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 what they do. Welcome to Crime Time News where the difference is in the med scarlet news with a buzz. It is quite obvious that Jamaica is getting worse and worse by the day, by the second, every moment of every day. Because we see say, these new generation, they are heartless, they are cold, they do not respect the living, them not respect the dead, them not respect them own mama, them not respect the elder, them not respect nothing, none at all, except for their selfish agenda. And if we had any sorts of question, this is confirmation that pretty much Jamaica gone to the dogs. Because when we see an elder like this, 105 year old Mr. Vincent Wilson, he was robbed of at least 6 million Jamaican dollars in just a two month span. He does not use any sorts of online he does not have any sorts of credit card that is linked to his bank account. So therefore, what are they going to say? They are going to say somebody hack him account. They are going to say him use online and him give somebody him password and him cookie, whatever the case is. He went into the bank physically with his physical bank book. In a just one transaction... Them take out $5 million one time. People, you are telling me in an island, third world country such as Jamaica, somebody can just withdraw $5 million without any sorts of red flag, any sorts of alert. This tells you that this is happening internally without a shadow of a doubt. 
So this man is very traumatized because people, after all, this man was a public accountant. This man worked all his life. So therefore, this is his life saving. When he asks the bank, when the people in my TVJ ask the bank, what is going to go on with this man's account? Them say, you don't know, so we can't talk because of the bank's protocol and policy as it pertains to person's privacy. So in other words, they are concerned about his privacy after the facts, but they were not concerned with the fact that somebody in at the bank, somebody that they hired, was swindling this man's money without any sorts of conscience. This is the definition of elderly A-B-U-S-E and this is why we should not feel sorry for these scammers. We should not feel sorry for these employees in the bank. People, gone are the days when you could carry your money to the bank and it was safe. Gone are the days when you could leave your money under the mattress in your house and it's safe. People, me don't know what people are going to do with their money nowadays because it seems as if nowhere or no one is safe. So that is why when we see or hear people glorifying these criminals, glorifying these scumbag scammer, this is why we see so much of them losing their life in a some sorts of Mark X, them flip over, turn over the car, burn up. This is why we should not feel sorry for them. I am not throwing any sorts of sympathy party, especially for these new generation of criminal, scumbag, scammers and fraudsters in at these banks and outside of these banks. Now, since this investigation by TVJ, the NCB has replaced this man's money. This man is back to where he was in square one. However, if I was his family member, meaning son, grandson, I would probably advise him, maybe you might want to take out your money and put it under the bed. It is safer there or maybe not. Now, the sad thing is that when you contact these financial institutions, they give you nothing but a whole bunch of runaround, a whole bunch of excuses. However, you will get no sorts of solution. It is usually delayed, delayed tactics. Then I'm going to tell you, say, listen, we're doing some sorts of investigation and this investigation is going to take X or Z amount of time. However, you will have to wait and be inconvenienced. So the sad thing is that if you check the history of when this all started, it was after the big C situation when they start to outsource to these call centers. That is where most of the fraud started because most of the people that are fraudsters would go in there as mold, get your information sent to them scammer friend and they would co-conspire until them clear out your accounts. The bank is fully aware of this. However, they have not put any sorts of security measures into play. So therefore, we keep having the same problem over and over. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. At the end of the day, most persons who are victim will not get their money back. Most persons will not even have the option to go to court. Most of the time, these banks are in denial. Most of the times, they are not going to give you any sorts of favorable resolution, solution point blank and period further on in the news it is called bring out the confetti let's have a celebration party it happened once again based on the information it is said that three young men try to rob some sorts of establishment in a manchester however the tables were turned literally when the licensed firearm holder, who happens to be the popo, happens to be the proprietor of said institution. Based on the information, it is said that the three robbers run in upon the people and place. Nobody move, nobody gets hurt. However, it seems as if the owner for that business was not having it. He decided that he was not going to be a victim. He was going to prey upon the predator. Tables turn upon them. Him wheel and pop off, blaze up some can after the smoke clear at least. Three persons were conned up. 
However, unfortunately for the family members and cronies of one, he did not make it. He was seen laying stiff stone coal on the pavement, pretty much in a black light. The appliance, he was blacked out, tapped out, out to the afterlife. Now, people, it seems as if these young youths, they are not going to learn until them learn the hard way. Like them say, every day that the bucket goes to the well, one day the bucket is going to drop out or the bottom are going to drop out. Well, unfortunately for these people, they should have went to the wishing well because things did not turn out very well for them. Fortunately for the rest of Jamaica. Point blank and period. Further on in the news, it is called Make sure when you come to Jamaica on any sorts of vacation, especially if you are not from here, if you meet a man, if you meet a woman, don't let them take you to any sorts of rickety tickety, sorts of Airbnb or any sorts of guest house. If there is no sorts of security, meaning 24 hours gates, that means more than likely they cannot guarantee your safety. Even at these 24 hour security places, however, Majosa say, you are more guaranteed a safer place to stay. A lady from Norway, Norwegian, them call her, would learn the hard way. This incident occurred Tuesday night at about 10.30 in a Montego Bay, St. James, that is. Based on the information, it is said that she and her Jamaican partner was on their way back to their Airbnb, their guest house. When they were at the gates, they were pounced upon by a lone gunman, stick them up, wanted their possession, meaning watch ring cash. The lady gave him 1,500 Jamaican, that is equivalent to $10 US. It is said that he then ordered the lady, Norwegian, 31-year-old, and the man that she was with, Jamaican, to the back of the St. James Parish Church. People, it tells you whenever you hear any sorts of church, more than likely are some sorts of garrison, especially in a St. James. It is said that this gunman then placed the man upon him face, spread out, he then comments, to jump over the fence of this Norwegian lady. Now people, can you imagine you leave your decent place, come a Jamaica upon vacation because you meet some sort of man and you want to come enjoy yourself. When you call this man, this man will tell you, say, yeah, I come from St. James. And you say, but me always hear all sorts of crime and violence down there and he pretty much guarantee you. No man, it's safe. Me govern the place. Only to end up and learning the wrong way, meaning getting your friends jump over, getting violated the worst way for a woman. Can you imagine what this man or the conversation must have been like after this man violate this lady in front of the woman and he could not do anything to save her Pretty much the man with the tool of all the talk. People, it is a sad state of affair. Bad enough when you turn upon the locals. And I am not saying that the people them from overseas life matter more than Jamaicans, the local. But me just as say, just imagine what is going to happen when this hits the foreign press. And people here say Jamaican are safe. People are D-E-A-D -E like fly. If you go down there, you stand a chance of getting violated. R-A-P-E in the worst way. Jamaica is getting from bad to worse. However, when you start on the ghost that laid the golden egg, it is going to be problematic. When people start come stop coming to Jamaica and then you turn upon the locals and then you run out of everything because everybody broke or everybody D-E-A-D. -E what is going to happen then? Jamaica is going to be in the worst predicament that it has ever been in in the past. Point blank and period. So anyways people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. Bless up.